Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Forex PNL. Today is Saturday, the 17th of June 2023, and it's time for me to do my weekend Forex forecast for the upcoming week. As usual, we have a few currency pairs that we're going to be analyzing, and also uh, I think there are about 13 of them. And um, as usual, before we take a look at the um, technical analysis, and we're going to be taking a look at the uh, economical calendar from Forex Factory. And uh, well, right now, what you're seeing right now is the uh, economical calendar from Forex Factory for next week. As usual, I have um, filtered for the high impact news and um, any bank holidays that we have all right, um, next week. Now, as you can see here on Sunday, we don't have any um, news items. And uh, well, on Monday, okay, that's um, Juneteenth, we do have um, public holiday, bank holiday um, in the United States, all right? And then on Tuesday, no high impact news as well. So, well, the beginning of the week, pretty much, we don't have um, any high impact news on the calendar. However, as we start, um, you know, going into Wednesday, um, you know, we start seeing some um, high impact news. Um, first of all, we have the CPI data coming from the um, British Axis, okay, 2 a.m. Eastern time on Wednesday. And then um, on, on the same day, we do have um, um, power testifying, all right, at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And uh, well, on Thursday, we do have um, interest rate decisions now coming from the um, from Switzerland and also from um, Britain. All right. So when you, um, you know, this is a very good day for you to kind of, <laughs> you know, pay attention to your charts and see if you really want to be um, involved um, in this particular currency pairs okay or in this but in any pairs that are related to these particular currencies all right now uh, we are expecting on both cases an increase in by 25 basis points you can see from um, 1.50 to 1.75 and also from 4.5 to um 4.75 so let's see how it goes all right um and also we also have um on the same day um Powell will also be testifying as well. So, well, uh, a few things to keep an eye on as we go into next week. Now, on Friday, we have... Um Friday, we have um, a bunch of PMIs coming out across the board. Uh, let me see one second. Let me clean up my charts. All right. So you can see on Friday, we do have, um, you know, the French um, flash PMI, um, the um, German PMI, um, also the PMI coming from British Axis and United States Axis, respectively. All right. So, well, um, a few high, um, you know, heavy hitters next week. But again, I still believe it is very, very tradable. Okay. So, uh, well. That's really it for the um, high impact news that we have on the economical calendar. So um, let's take a look now at what we have from a technical um, analysis perspective. Okay. So as usual, we are going to be kicking things off with um, Dixie. Now, uh, well, looking at Dixie, you can see that, um, well, obviously price is still within this particular range that we have here. Um, well, as I told you guys, uh, when we had these um, three bullish weeks, um, there was an expectation that, well, maybe the bears might come into the markets before the bulls continued um, to push these markets to the upside. However, uh, this is looking more bearish than I had um, in originally anticipated. Uh, well, this particular week, uh, you can see how the bears really came in in momentum. Okay, you can see we have almost a full body bearish candle for the weekly. So, um, in my own opinion, this is something to now keep an eye on. Uh, is it possible that um, you know the markets are now probably looking for an, uh, an opportunity to maybe give us a break to the downside? Okay, maybe breaking below this range um, for further continuations to the downside. Or well, uh, is price just probably trying to to test the bottom of the range and then from there maybe give us another push to the upside towards the top of the range okay or even possibly above who knows well um only time will tell but i just wanted to let you guys know that um the original flow okay has been broken and then uh, right now maybe the bears have an upper hand in this market um as we're going to see if we zoom into the smaller time frames okay so um let now if we take a look at the um, daily time frame well you can see in the daily we had a few levels that we were keeping an eye on i think i had this one mapped out earlier okay um and you can see how the markets dipped into this particular demand zone area um give us a push to the upside did not take off the previous swing high and then we got another push to the downside um they attempted again could not even take off the previous handle and from here the bs came in a momentum okay post um fomc conference all right and right now that move not only broke this particular demand zone that we have here it also broke this particular demand zone that we have in this particular area okay so you can see well there is an increased and bearish momentum in this particular market so uh in my own opinion well the bears are in control right now all right at least from uh let's say from a daily perspective our fourth perspective okay so maybe a possible push to the upside uh might not even make it all the way to this um four hours um supply zone maybe just to retest these levels here and then um from here maybe the boost might, the bears might come in again for further continuations to the downside uh please do keep in mind that we do have this particular um demand zone area 
here as well and the markets can easily bounce from here for further continuations to the upside okay um okay. you can see this is the demand because we took off this particular level of structure um to the upside right so uh um in my opinion well let's just keep an eye on this and uh, right now in my opinion i think the bears are in control in this market i think the picture is clearer from the four hours time frame you can see from the four hours time frame this market well was giving us a very nice flow to the upside scoring higher highs and higher lows um in this part of the charts and then from right around here okay this is where the markets changed to a downtrend okay you can see how uh, we had this level of structure right around here you can see this level of structure and the markets give us a break of that particular level of sub truck structure i'm um, creating this particular um, supply zone in the process and you can see the markets dipped into that supply zone and since then um you know we've just been flowing to the downside okay um even the markets barely make it towards the supply zones they just give us a little push to the upside and um, you know give us another push to the downside okay creating new lows uh in this case it was almost a perfect uh, market movement you can see how we got a push to the downside and then pull back to into this particular supply zone just right around um fomc conference and then from there you can see how the markets um give us another momentum push to the downside so well um maybe a possible push okay to the upside into the supply zone which in my own opinion is maybe highly unlikely at this point i doubt if we are going to make it all the way towards this um 103.20 area before the markets continue to the downside if we do well it is okay but um, I doubt it. Um, more realistic, in my own opinion, is um, maybe a possible retest of this breakout level right around, let's say, 102.75 level. And then from there, I will expect the BS to start coming into this market again to continue pushing this market to the downside. All right. So again, let's see how it goes. All right. OK, so um, next up is going to be um, US dollar Swiss francs. Now for US dollar Swiss francs, the story is quite um, similar. Um, if you guys remember, I think about two weeks ago or thereabouts, I told you guys that, um, well, we do have this um, weekly supply zone that is, in my own opinion, quite large and that I would not be surprised if the market starts bouncing off of this particular supply zone that led to the break of this level of farm structure. OK, if you remember that uh, right now, you can see how the markets um, give us a nice um, push into that area. And then from there, you can see the BS and now coming into these markets again so well who knows um there's a possibility that um the bears are going to continue pushing these markets um you know to the downside at least to retest maybe this previous um swing low that we have right around um 0 0.8750 area okay and uh well let's see in the daily time frame what do we have uh in the daily uh well you can see how we have now three solid bearish days so um there's a possibility that maybe the market gives us uh, maybe a push to the upside before another continuation to the downside okay that's kind of from um, the picture that i'm seeing here in um, us dollar swiss francs now if we go into the four hours time frame uh this is the um supply zone area that we have right now in the um h4 oops one second all right so this is the um four hours um that we have the uh, four hour supply zone that we have all right and then from here and uh, there are two possibilities here a possibility that maybe the market just gives us enough push to the upside just to retest this breakout area that we have here before continuing to the downside okay or or maybe the markets can easily from here also give you a push to the upside into the supply zone area right around that 90 um 10 area and then from there maybe give us another push to the downside okay so well let's which let's see which one the market is going to do but in my own opinion um we might get a little retracement to the upside and then from there the bs might come into this market for further continuation to the downside okay at least that is how the price action is looking at the moment okay so that's pretty much it for us dollar and um, swiss francs next up is going to be euro us dollar now um for euro us dollar this is almost like um an inverted dixie at the moment okay uh you can see well again just like in the case of dixie just imagine very bullish week um that we have okay the markets just give us a very nice um push to the upside this particular week okay this is not this is a little more than the retracements that i would expect um if we are continuing to the downside so right now i would say the bulls are more in control of this markets and we might see further continuations to the upside now if we go into the daily time frame now in the daily time frame what do we have here um you can see how this markets um you know was kind of um, moving up to the to the upside and then after this particular level was broken to the downside we kind of started pushing again to the downside all right so not much happening it's just the markets moving up and down uh, we do have this supply zone area right now so that's one to keep in mind and um, the markets can easily respect this particular supply zone and then from here give us a retracement um to the downside okay will this be the beginning of a new swing for further continuations to the downside 
who knows i kind of doubt it at this point i think it is probably just gonna be enough to give us a retracement to the downside from where i would expect the bulls to start coming back into this market again for further continuation to the upside at least for a potential retest of this um, previous swing high area that we have here Okay, that's kind of what I'm seeing right now on the daily charts. Now, if we go into the uh, four hours time frame, uh, you notice that well, we do have a very solid um, demand zone area right around that 108.50 institutional price level. Okay, you can see very nice um, swinging markets. You can see how we've been scoring lower highs and lower lows in this side of the charts. And then once price took off this particular um, supply zone, the markets um, turned bullish. And you can see this is the demand zone that led to the break of that level of structure. And the markets just from there gave us a dip into that demand zone and since then we've just been pushing again scoring higher highs and higher lows um you know in these particular markets uh for those of you in the telegram channel i did show you guys um this particular um you know move um that i was anticipating and um hopefully you guys were able to profit from it okay so now uh, for euro us dollar what i would love to see is for well um for the markets to give us a push to the downside uh maybe um towards this particular previous some um, swing um high area right around here maybe towards let's say that 165 level um just to retest this swing high okay the markets can, can easily bounce from here to the upside or in the best case scenario for me would be let's say the markets giving us a complete push into this particular demand zone area uh right around let's say 1.00840 level and then from there i'm um, giving us a push to the upside okay that would be my preferred course of action but i just want to let you guys know that um very easily the markets can bounce off um from this particular level that we have right around here for further continuations to the upside okay uh in, in in both cases i'm expecting okay i'm more inclined to see the markets give us a little retracement before giving us another push to the upside okay that's gonna be my preferred course of action in euro us dollars we go into next week now uh, assuming the markets open and just from here maybe the markets just continue ranging and uh, just give us another push to the upside well it's very simple we just um reanalyze our charts identify the newly formed demand zones and just continue marking the charts up okay so um that's pretty much um what i'm seeing right now okay so let's see how it goes again keep in mind we do have 110 institutional price level here so that might be some nice levels to um start taking profits assuming we do get this retracement okay all right that's pretty much um if for euro us dollar uh next up is going to be um australian dollar us dollar now for australian dollar us dollar i'm not gonna waste your time very similar story you can see we do have um a very significant um level of our resistance on our charts okay in this particular area and then finally the markets gave us a nice push to the upside and um, breaking that level of structure and creating this demand zone in the process so um my still my expectation is very very simple right now um the markets you can see for the few uh past few four hours candle you notice that um we've not really been going anywhere so probably the market is kind of topping out here uh well i will prefer to see the markets give me a rotation to the downside towards let's say 0.6800 institutional price level and then from here i would like to see the bulls begin to um, come into this market again for further continuations to the upside that is going to be my preferred course of action in australian dollar us dollar the markets are looking quite bullish right now uh, if you guys remember i was keeping an eye on this particular currency pair and uh, in this particular supply zone that we have here so you see how the markets give us a break of that supply zone and from there it's just been bullish push after bullish push we've taken off this particular level of resistance so at this particular point the bulls are in control in this particular market make no mistakes okay so um let's see how it goes in my own opinion um just like i said maybe the markets give us a little push to the downside into this demand zone that led to the break of this level of structure and then from here right around here i will expect the bulls to start coming into this market for further continuations to the upside all right so um that's pretty much it for australian dollar us dollar next up is going to be new zealand dollar us dollar i don't even think i have anything in this particular currency pair at the moment i'm not really going to waste your time to be completely honest with you but just like in the other us dollar crosses um maybe a possible push to the downside and then from there maybe another expansion to the upside okay and uh, if we pay attention here we do have this particular area of um resistance on this particular pair so um be very very careful as you as you trade this particular currency pair in my own opinion there are better um us dollar crosses um compared to the new zealand dollar um us dollar right now all right so um, just keep that in mind um not much for me in this particular currency pair to be completely honest with you all right so um next up is going to be us dollar canadian dollar now us dollar canadian dollar kind of broke away from the um, flag formation that um i was following earlier or let's say for the past few weeks uh, if you guys remember i had a flag formation of this nature 
uh, um, you know showing up on my chart something of this nature this was what i had but um if you pay attention now you notice that uh, well the markets um you know has now clearly broken below that particular flag formation that i have all right and uh, you can see we got a pullback to retest it and from there boom the bs came in a momentum um to you know continue pushing this market to the downside so clearly we are not trading inside this particular flag formation anymore or at least at the moment so let me go ahead and delete that now um if you pay attention here on the um, weekly time frame i believe let me zoom in on the weekly time frame you notice that and um, well we do have this demand zone in particular in the weekly time frame um that led to the break of all this level of um, structure to the upside okay now um in my opinion it's been a little weak now because you notice how the market has just been hovering just above um that particular weekly demand zone area so who knows maybe this is now weak and maybe the market is now looking for a way to continue to the downside or uh, let's say is this now going to be the retest of this demand zone area from where maybe the bulls might come into this market okay who knows only time will tell but um let's see okay i just wanted to point out that we do have a very um strong weekly demand zone in this area so be very very careful with this particular currency pair but but i think that the bears are in control in the moment if you pay attention you'll notice how you know the market has not really been going anywhere you can see we got this bounce did not take off this high um the markets came back again we did not take off this high upon this attempt and since then you know the market has now given us a very nice push to the downside taking off these lows that we have in this area so at this moment the bears are in control but um keep an eye on this particular um bullish demand zone that we have here in the weekly now uh in the daily not much uh we probably have some form of um, supply zone forming up here as a result of the break of this level of um, structure but in my opinion i think it's clearer in the four hours time frame all right so you can see here in the four hours time frame we do have this particular level in this area uh right around let's say 1.3275 level so you can see how the markets um bounced off of that area here and gave us a very massive push to the downside um i doubt if you're going to make a pullback all the way towards the supply zone so a very good level to keep an eye on in my own opinion right now will be maybe for the markets to give us a push to the upside to retest this particular um breakout level right around let's say um 1.3275 area from where i will expect the bs to maybe come into this market okay it is not out of um, reach for the markets to maybe dip all the way into this particular supply zone but i think at this moment um, I will expect maybe these levels to hold and then from here uh, for these markets to continue to the downside from here. All right. So that's pretty much it for US dollar, Canadian dollar. Next up is going to be British pounds, US dollar. Now, this pair has also been waxing strongly to the upside. Just take a look at the uh, weekly candle that we have. We did have this uh, particular level of our resistance on our charts on the weekly. Can see it was respected here and then from here boom the markets gave us a nice push to the upside obviously now obviously creating even a weekly demand zone area okay as a result of this break of structure that we have here so the bulls are in these markets make no mistakes okay um right now you can see on the daily time frame as well we do have this very solid demand zone area that was formed as a result of the break of this level of structure and even if we go into the four hours time frame you notice that we also have um this solid demand zone area uh in the four hours time frame that was formed as a result of the break of this level of structure and actually it is a multi-break you can see you have and uh, we have this particular level of resistance resistance and i bet you if i keep zooming in you see that is also a level of resistance right around here so that is a solid level that we have in the h4 and um, i'm keeping a very close eye on that particular one obviously as we go into next week what i will expect to see is um, for the markets to give us a push to the downside okay a retracement level to us maybe let's say 12700 um just right around here um but preferably if the markets can just even tap let's say 126.75 level this demand zone area anywhere from right around here i'll be looking for an opportunity to go along for further continuations to the upside okay that is going to be my preferred move in british pounds us dollars we go into next week now that's it for gu next up is going to be us dollar japanese yen uh, obviously the yen crosses continue to wax strongly to the upside um you notice how well this pair is just giving us some bullish move uh, you can see we had this level of resistance on our charts give us a nice push to the upside breaking that level of resistance we had this demand zone area form the markets barely tapped i was actually waiting for this demand zone area to tap but the markets did not tap and then from there boom to the upside so well that happens sometimes you're going to win some trades and you're going to miss some of them you're going to also lose some trades so uh you have to just get used to it if you're going to um be in this business now um enough of my um my side talk now right let's see from here you can see 
now the market has given us a nice push to the upside okay and then uh, we have now broken this level of structure again so the new demand zone has formed in this area what i would love to see in this price for the markets to give me a push to the downside into this demand zone area from where i will expect the bulls to come in again for further continuations to the upside okay this is my preferred course of action in british pounds and uh, in us dollar japanese yen all right so that's it for uj next up is going to be um british pounds and japanese yen this pair is actually just um giving us a very nice push to the offset just take a look at their bullish candle okay this is a weekly candle in british pounds um Japanese yen. I uh, will say how many pips? Maybe about 700 pips for the week from 174 all the way to 181. So that's about 700, 800 pips for this week. All right. So, um, well, you can tell the bulls and these markets. I don't need to um, even tell you that. Now, if you go into the um, daily time frame, you notice that um, obviously the markets has formed a few demand zones. This is a demand zone. This is a demand zone. Price is quite far from those demand zone areas now. So I'm really not going to be paying much attention to this um, daily demand zone areas. But um, it's it's important that we are aware that they are there. All right. Now, uh, if we go into the um, daily time in the four hours time frame, we have this particular demand zone area here. This is the one I'm keeping an eye on in the four hours time frame, and uh, markets can easily give us that push to the downside into that particular demand zone area right around let's say that um 179 40 79 50 area from where the bulls can easily come into this market all right i'm keeping an eye on this particular level but obviously before we get there we have the um, h1 demand zone area which in my opinion the markets can easily also react from early in the week so what i would love to see in this pair is um let's say the market's giving me a nice push to, into this particular demand zone area right around 180 50 to retest this particular demand zone that led to the break of this level of structure and from here maybe give us a push to the upside um maybe before giving us let's say another rotation to the downside into this particular four hours demand zone area right around 179.50 area from where i will expect the bulls to now come into this market again for further continuations to the upside okay so this is my preferred course of action i would like to see an initial reaction off of this particular h1 demand zone and then from there um i would like to see the markets give us another rotation into this particular um h4 demand zone area for further continuations to the upside okay that is going to be my preferred course of action but as you guys know the yen crosses uh when they start moving it's almost like a moving train that um cannot even stop so it's very easy the markets can just give us a sideways consolidation and another continuation to the upside in that case you already know what to do just keep uh, analyzing your charts read price action and identify the newly formed demand zones on your charts all right that's pretty much um you know what i can say but this is my preferred course of action as we go into next week for gj all right so that's it for gj next up is going to be euro yen uh you can see again i'm not going to waste your time uh in this one okay, obviously very nice bullish push just like um the other yen crosses so um again very simple course of action for me i'd like to see the bulls coming to this the bs coming push the markets down into let's say 153.50 institutional price level in this h4 demand zone area from where i would expect the bulls to come into this market again to continue pushing these markets to the upside all right um that's it for that's it for euro yen next up is going to be um new zealand dollar japanese yen now for new zealand dollar japanese yen the story is the same again like i said i'm not going to be wasting your time all yen crosses have been bullish you can see the weekly time frame this market has now given us a very nice push to the upside clearing this level of resistance that we have um on in new zealand dollar japanese yen all right so um this market is bullish clearly bullish no no mistakes okay obviously we have a demand zone area here on the daily but the market is quite far from there now so that's why i'm not marking it out now um in the four hours time frame you can see we have this demand zone area in the four hours time frame that clearly led to the break of this level of um, structure that we have all over this chart in this area so uh in my own opinion um that is a strong um, demand zone area and uh, what i would love to see next week is for the markets to give me um a put a push to the downside okay a retracement into this particular demand zone area maybe 8750 area anywhere from right around here i would like to see the bulls come into this market again to continue pushing these markets to the upside all right so that's it for new zealand dollar japanese yen next up is going to be canadian dollar japanese yen uh, if you guys remember about two weeks ago i told you guys this is my preferred um currency pair um uh, for a very nice push to the upside and you can see that um this pair has really taken off to the upside since then all right so um that is it uh, you can see if you go into the um daily time frame this market just continues to push to the upside um creating this demand zone here as well we also have another demand zone here but like i said 
the market is quite far from those levels so that's the reason why i'm not marking them out uh if you see here in the four hours time frame we do have this solid demand zone area um that i would like to see the markets give us a retest of right around that 10600 institutional price level okay so um again just like in the case of gj maybe a push to the h1 demand zone a bounce off and then a retest of the h4 demand zone before we get the bounce to the upside okay this is going to be my kind of my preferred course of action in this particular currency play okay you can see in that h1 this is the demand zone area that we have right around that um 106 maybe 106 um 60 area 106 50 area anywhere from right around here i would like to see the bulls coming to this market to push to the upside and then maybe a, 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 a rotation to the downside into this particular levels right around 10600 area in this particular h4 demand zone from where i will expect the bulls to come into this market for further continuations to the upside again at the end of the day remember anything can happen in this market what i'm showing you right now is just my preferred course of action in this particular currency pairs okay this is not what the market must do this is what i expect based on the analysis that i'm doing all right this is my forecast remember the market does not care about my forecast um, markets can open and uh, my forecast can be um you know but I say almost non-existent anymore okay all right so that's it for um canadian dollar japanese yen now um the last but not the least for this particular week in terms of currencies is going to be british pounds and um, swiss francs okay um again not much here we just have a very nice um, demand zone forming in the um, four hours time frame you can see this market has been forming higher highs and higher lows all right which is indicative of an uptrend right and uh, you can see that and um, well we do have a very nice push to the upside breaking above this level of um, structure creating this demand zone in the process so what i would like to see next week is for the markets to give me a push to the downside into this particular demand zone area maybe right around that like 1.14 um 100 institutional price level okay anywhere from right around here i'll see the bulls coming into this market for further continuations to the upside all right so that's it for um british pounds and swiss francs the last but not the least is gold um let's see what do we have in gold now um as you can see here in gold um the markets has been quite ranging okay you see that and well after we topped out in that particular le level i told you guys the last week or last two weeks that i would like to see um the bears come into this market and break this particular level of structure before i start i'm um, looking for bearish opportunities and as you can see here we retested that particular level and from there the bears the bulls came into this market and continue pushing these markets to the outside so right, right now it's almost like we are in a ranging market with this being the top of the range in the four hours time frame and this being the bottom of the range in the four hours time frame okay so let's see um this is the range that the market is trading in at the moment so let's see uh with the bears coming to this market and um, maybe give us a nice push to the downside breaking this particular level or with the bulls coming to maybe push push the markets to the upside towards the topper um, boundary of this particular range who knows only time will tell but in my own opinion as you can see here um this is the range the market is trading in and right now we are right around in the middle of that particular range so not much can be done now um i'll say maybe if we can get here start searching for short opportunities or if the market opens and maybe we we get get a push to the downside maybe somewhere around here maybe we can we can easily start searching for long opportunities in the event that we break above or below this range then you just wait for pullback into um supply zones in the smaller time frame um um you know and then start searching for bounces of those um you know demand or supply zones that must have formed okay so that's pretty much it for um for gold and that is pretty much it for my analysis for this particular week um hopefully you gained some value from this particular video and if you did guys please do not forget to like and subscribe to the channel and um, click on the notification bell so that you always get updates whenever i post the video so that's pretty much it guys i'll uh, see you guys next week cheers and have a nice trading week ahead bye bye